All right, welcome back to The Effect. So uh, we've been talking about pathways on our causal diagrams, things that are expl explanations of why two variables might be related to each other. Uh, often this comes up because we are looking at pathways between treatment and outcome, and we want to know all the reasons why we might observe treatment and outcome being related to each other, whether that's a reason we are interested in for our research question, a good path, or a reason we are not interested in that we need to shut down and close our bad paths. If we can shut down our bad paths, leave all our good paths open, then we have identified the effect of interest. Of course, all of this assumes that our diagram is correct in the first place, that we have written down a reasonable representation of what the actual data generating process looks like, where our data actually came from, the causal laws in the world that explain where all this stuff is. Now, this is very hard to do. The world is very complex and we are trying to model it uh, and we're gonna leave out some details. Um, but thankfully there are some things that we can do to test whether or not we've gotten it particularly wrong. This brings us to the realm of placebo tests. Now, placebo tests are something that are gonna pop up a whole lot in these videos because they're super useful in doing causal inference. A placebo test in the context of doing causal inference uh, is when you take your assumptions, you take the assumptions that you've made, which in writing down a causal diagram is a set of assumptions, and you use those assumptions to say, okay, well, if these assumptions are true, here is, an here is a relationship or an effect that should be zero. There should be no relationship or effect here. So very basic example, let's say that you're interested in the effect of whether uh, advertising, doing a television advertisement for your company increases your sales. Okay. Um, and you say, okay, well, I want to know the effect of this. Uh, so I'm going to do, I'm going to set up some sort of uh, research design. I think, okay, I think, I think this is going to identify my effective interest if I control for these variables and then say, okay, well, great. I've, I've got my plan. And you say, well, okay, if I'm, if all these assumptions are correct, it should not, it should be the case that my advertising will improve my sales next month but it should not be the case that my advertising will improve my sales last month, right? If, that, if I did that analysis and I found that my advertising today caused my sales last month to go up, well, that's not possible. So if I do, if I use my exact same research design that I have in mind, I control for all the variables I said I was gonna control for, and I still find that this month's advertising affects last month's sales, well, that shouldn't be. That effect should be zero, right? The fact that it's not zero says that I've missed something in my assumptions, that there's some control that I'm not accounting for. So I'm leaving something out. I need to go back to the drawing board. That is a placebo test, and that's gonna come in very handy because it's a good way of trying to get a sense of whether these some of these assumptions that we're making are actually reasonable. How can we use the pathways idea on our causal diagrams to do some placebo tests? Conveniently, every causal diagram is chock full of placebo tests because if you look at a causal diagram, it has a lot of implied relationships in it that should be zero. Let me tell you what I mean. If you pick any two variables on a causal diagram, not just the treatment and the outcome, you can write out all the causal pathways between them, okay? Uh, and when you do that, you can say, oh, well, you know, it looks like here are all the causal pathways between these two variables based on the diagram that I have. Then what can you do? You can shut all of them down. If you can shut down all the pathways between one variable and another, what should the relationship be between those two variables in the data? It should be zero. Right? If there's no pathway, there's no way for these two variables to be related to each other. Because remember, the pathways aren't just the causal effects that we're interested in, it's any reason why two variables might be related to each other. If we can shut all of those down, there should be no relationship between these two variables in the data. So, if we can shut down every single pathway between two variables, and they're still related to each other, then there must be some pathway that we left out that we've left out of our diagram, that we've left out of the set of things that we are conditioning and controlling for, that we might need to account for in order to actually get the right diagram so that we know what to control for to identify our effect of interest. Let's do an example. Let's go back to our wine and lifespan example. Let's, let's pick two variables. Let's pick drugs and income. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is think about all the pathways between drugs and income. Uh, so we have a few, we have income to wine to drugs that. Okay, great. Uh, we can go at that same idea another couple ways. We can go income to U1 to health to wine to drugs. That's another pathway that we can take. Uh, there's also a bunch of pathways that go through uh, lifespan. We can go income to lifespan to drugs. We can go income to wine to lifespan to drugs. And there's a bunch of other ones as well. I can keep listing all of these out. Then I can say to myself, well, what do I need to do to close all these pathways down? Now, conveniently, colliders come into a play a lot here, especially when we're not just looking at treatment and outcome. Uh, you'll notice that any pathway that goes through lifespan, lifespan is going to be a collider 
on that pathway because both of the arrows are going to point towards lifespan. So income to, to lifespan to drugs, for example, the pathway goes income to lifespan, and then the arrow is pointing towards lifespan, and also lifespan to drugs, but the arrow is pointing towards lifespan. So lifespan is a collider there, which means that pathway is pre-closed. We don't need to worry about it. We don't need to control for lifespan. We don't want to control for lifespan. So we can ignore all the pathways that go through lifespan and just go look at the ones that go through wine, which are income to wine to drugs, income to U1 to health to wine to drugs. Okay, great. So how can we close all those pathways down? Well, we just control for wine. Uh, and uh, so if we look at the data and we say, okay, what's the relationship between income and drugs while controlling for wine? So let's say we only look at wine drinkers and look at the relationship between income and drugs, or we only look at non-wine drinkers, look at the relationship between income and drugs, or we control and condition statistically for the amount of wine that you drink and look at the relationship between in income and drugs, we should find that it is zero. And if we look at the data and it's not zero, then we know that we've left out some sort of pathway that lets us get from income to drugs without going through wine or lifespan. Right? And that would tell us that our diagram is incomplete. And I mean, even the process of writing out the pathways already tells you that this, this diagram is going to be deficient, right? Because what we're saying here is that the only way that your income is related to how many drugs you take is because of the fact that wine affects how many drugs you take. Clearly, that's not going to be sufficient, right? We're leaving something out of the drug taking picture there. So what can we do once we fail the placebo test? And which we almost, almost certainly have here, right? There's probably going to be that we find that income and drugs are still related to each other after we control for how much wine you drink. That's probably gonna happen. So what can we do with that information? Well, we, we knew before we started that there was gonna be something left out. So it's not a huge surprise that we like don't get exactly zero on this relationship. Uh, and remember, in causal inference, the, the goal here is not to get assumptions that are 100% correct. That's never gonna happen, it's impossible. Uh, our goal is to make assumptions that are close enough to correct that they don't mess us up too much. So if we look at this relationship, we fail the placebo test by a, like, it's a, a small relationship still there, you know, maybe that's okay. We're like, okay, yeah, we're leaving something a little bit out, but it's not gonna be a huge problem. Maybe that's the conclusion that we come to. Um, really, but we do want to think about carefully, well, what is it that we've left out? Why are income and drugs gonna be related to each other other than going through wine? And we can probably come up with a couple of reasons. And if some of those seem like they're gonna be pretty important reasons, then we'll probably want to put them on our causal diagram. And yes, go back to the process of figuring out what are the pathways that we have? What do we need to close? Maybe redo placebo tests. Failing a placebo test is at very least an opportunity for reflection as to what we have left out, and hopefully an opportunity to fix that problem of what we have left out. Uh, or maybe just say it's not that much of a problem, but at least at that point we know that there's still a problem there, and we can let our readers know uh, of our study uh, that there's a problem there. All right, that's it. Thank you very much. <laughs>